Life, liberty, and property do not exist because men have made laws. On the contrary, it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. Thursday, April 18th, 2024, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. The IMF, yes, the IMF, they're admitting now that uh, money printing, deficit spending leads to rising prices. Uh, they call it inflation, of course. They still haven't got it 100% correct, but they're going the right way. And that's what I want to talk about today. And also the fact that, unfortunately, the, the majority of the public in our uh, representative uh, governments in the West, I don't even want to say they're really that democratic or free, but be as it may, the majority of the, the public have been inculcated with this philosophy that the government owes them a, a lot that there is such a thing as a free lunch. And uh, I would argue that uh, part of the problem uh, is us in general. And I don't mean you or me, but uh, the, the mentality that government is there to help anytime you need help. Uh, there's the old saying of government being there from cradle to grave. And therein, I think, lies uh, the big problem in the West, that we've forgotten uh, the real purpose of government. And that's why I'm going to refer to the law by Frederick Bassiat today. But before we do, we're going to look at these couple of uh, articles by the IMF, well, by the FT. They're not just warning the United States about deficit spending, they're warning the UK. And here in the UK, unfortunately, it looks like we might get a, a new government. Not that the current government has done anything that much better, but uh, it's all uh, a matter of degree. But it looks like we're going to get a new government that's going to tax even more, punish those uh, that are more successful even more and perpetuate this philosophy of free lunch. <laughs> uh, a lot of people think there is a free lunch, but there is no such a thing, no such thing as a free lunch. And uh, that, with that, I will segue into the IMF warnings because the way we pay for these free lunches is through the debasement of the currency. And that's what the IMF is warning about. I, I think it's going to fall on, uh, yeah, on deaf ears, these warnings. Uh, this is from uh, yesterday. U.S. deficit poses significant risks to global economy, warns IMF. Fund also cites concern over fiscal imbalances in U.K., uh, China, and Italy. The IMF has warned that the U.S. that its massive fiscal deficits have stoked inflation and pose significant risks for the global economy. Why did I say earlier the IMF is going the right way about deficit spending and inflation but is still not 100% there? Well, because... Deficit spending and money printing is inflation. What we're seeing uh, is currency debasement as a result of the inflation. Currency debasement, all it means is that your currency buys less and it looks like prices go up. That's all it is. So technically, uh, they're not 100% right, but they're, in the, <laughs> they're getting warmer, so to speak. The fund said in its benchmark fiscal monitor that it expected the U.S. to record a fiscal deficit of 7.1% next year, more than three times the 2% average for uh, other advanced economies. 
Is it any wonder that uh, the dollar and all other economies, uh, currencies are going down the drain versus gold, gold being the ultimate, ultimate money, ultimate sound money. And if you uh, just a little uh, interruption here, if you're looking to add on to your gold and silver stack, uh, check my uh, affiliates below in the description. Mouse Franklin, uh, maybe go to their website. They always have a special on and also gold investments here in the UK. And uh, make sure you let them know that Mario or Maneco 64 sent you. So let's keep going. It also raised concerns over Chinese government debt, where the country set to record a deficit of 7.6% in 2025, more than double the 3.7% average for other emerging markets as Beijing copes with weak demand and the housing, housing crisis. So even the Chinese are at it. But I think the Chinese are directing the deficit spending more into the productive sector. Is that any better? No, I don't think so. But uh, anyway, the US and China were among four countries, the fund named that critically need to take policy action to address fundamental imbalances between spending and revenues. The others were the UK and Italy. Rampant spending by the U.S. and China in particular could have profound effects for the global economy and pose significant risk for baseline fiscal projections in other economies, the IMF said. Interesting that Janet Yellen, she was in China recently, and she was pushing for the Chinese to do even more deficit spending. So uh, I'm not sure she's going to listen to the IMF. The other problem uh, th this article talks about is that there are a lot of elections this year here in the UK, in the US, and so on. And usually politicians like to buy votes. And they can only do that through deficit spending, through cutting taxes. Not that I don't think cutting taxes is a good thing. But when you're going to be spending more, it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just go through this a little longer here. It says the assessment comes amid mounting concerns among economists and investors that 2025 will prove a crunch year for U.S. fiscal policy. The presumptive Republican pre presidential nominee, Donald Trump, has pledged to make his 2017 tax cuts permanent, a move the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget think tank expects to cost $5 trillion over the next decade. Uh, Democrats have been accused by Republicans and economists of doing too little to cut discretionary spending on health care and societal or social security, sorry. On Tuesday, IMF chief economist Pierre-Olivier Gorinches said the U.S.'s uh, Physical, fiscal position was a particular concern, suggesting it could complicate the Federal Reserve's attempt to return inflation to its 2% goal. So, do I believe the IMF wants to solve this problem of de deficit spending, inflation, big government? No, <laughs> they're just saying that to the, to the Americans and, and others that yeah, you know, slow down or else the game is going to be up. So what, in my opinion, is the solution to this? To be honest, I think the solution, the solution comes from uh, the, you know, the bottom of the pyramid, from the ground up, from the grassroots. Uh, we need people to realize that there is no such thing as a free lunch. That government is there to, to just administer the rule of law and nothing more. And, and that we need to be self-sufficient, uh, reliant. We need to demand sound money. Uh, we need to uh, demand the stop to wars. 
We need to demand the stop to welfare spending. We need to demand the stop um, of the uh, amalgamation of the state and the corporate world for profits in war. It, you know, this problem of big government and government spending is not just a leftist problem. It's also a, a right wing problem. Yes, uh, until people, the general public, realize that uh, they're here to look after themselves and not to demand government to do everything for them, uh, not to demand government to come and bail out an energy company or a bank or any other enterprise, uh, not to demand government to invest in big corporations to bring in jobs into a country. Uh, until we do that, we're going to have this problem. And this is where the law comes in by Frederick Bastia. Uh, Frederick Bastia, excuse me. So who was Frederick Bastia? Uh, I'll read here uh, from the book. It says, 1801-1850 was a French economist statesman and writer, his uncompromising defenses of free trade, the market economy, and individual liberty pitted him against politicians, both right and left. His writings in include economic sophisms, which championed free trade economic harmonies, a treatise uh, on economic principles, plus a host of essays, including the state, and what is seen and what is not seen. To this day, his witty aphorisms and incisive arguments are quoted by public figures, speakers, and writers everywhere. So my favorite uh, epigram, or his most memorable epigram, is this one here, and I quote, the state is that great fiction by which everyone tries to live at the expense of everyone else. So there you go. And I'm going to just go through the beginning of the book here where he talks about uh, the law or the rule of law, if you want to call it. And uh, to give you an idea what Bastia thought the purpose of government was. The law perverted, and the police powers of the state perverted along with it. The law, I say, not only turned from its proper purpose, but made to follow an entirely contrary purpose. The law become the weapon of every kind of greed. Instead of checking crime, the law itself guilty of the evils it is supposed to punish. If this is true, it is a serious fact. And moral duty requires me to call the attention of my fellow citizens to it. Life is a gift from God. We hold from God the gift which includes all others. This gift is life, physical, intellectual, and moral life. But life cannot maintain itself alone. The creator of life has entrusted us with the responsibility of preserving, developing, and perfecting it. In order that we may accomplish this, he has provided us with a collection of marvelous faculties. And he has put us in the midst of a variety of natural resources. By the application of our faculties to these natural resources, we convert them into products and use them. This process is necessary in order that life may run its appointed course. You can see why uh, Klaus Schwab wouldn't be a fan of Frederick Bastia, because he thinks he should be in charge of everything, right? Not us individuals. Life, faculties, production, in other words, individuality, liberty, property, this is man. You can add woman to, to that. Uh, and in spite of 
the cunning of the artful political leaders, these three gifts uh, from God precede all human legislation and are superior to it. Life, liberty, and property do not exist because men have made laws. On the contrary, it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. I'm going to stop here. You, you can get this book uh, online, a free PDF, or you might want to buy it from the Mises Institute website, which is Mises.org. Highly recommend it. Not a long book. So I'm going to stop right here. Uh, so, yeah, it's up to us individuals then to demand small government to elect the representatives that will be there to just administer the rule of law and that's it. Yes, they're very rare, those kinds of politicians. One of them, of course, used to be Ron Paul. And um, you can bet if more Ron Pauls pop up all over the place, there will be a huge move against them to, you know, they, they'll use the uh, strategy of infamy. They'll try to discredit them because it's a threat. Uh, small government, the rule of law is a threat to the, the hangers on, you know, to the politicians, to, to the leftists, to the rightists, you know, be it in, in the welfare state, be it in the military industrial complex, be it in the... Uh, in finance, be it anywhere, uh, all those people who benefit from public largesse, and by that I mean taxation and inflation. So there, there we, there you go. Until we get that uh, a grassroots movement that is real, really uh, honest and truthful to itself about the purpose of government, we're going to continue to see. Inflation, deficit spending, wars, and more and more troubles, unfortunately. So, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.18 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 23.78. It's up uh, about three quarters of a percent. So, it's picked up quite nicely. High's been 81, low 59. Silver... Uh, Came off yesterday quite a bit. So did gold. Uh, what do I think is happening right now? Well, in any market, things don't happen in a straight line. And I think gold and silver in the last two to three weeks has done really well. And all we're seeing here is a bit of a breather before I actually think they'll go back up or the currencies go back down. Anyway... Silver's at 28.46, up 26 cents, or just under 1%. High's been 63, low 12. Dow futures is up 98 points. The NASDAQ uh, is up 87. I think it was down quite a bit yesterday. Uh, I, I don't follow the stock markets that much, but it looks like they're kind of topping right now. Uh, yesterday, I think uh, the fact that Treasury yields went down a bit help the stock markets why did treasury yields go down well there's a good 20 20 year uh t-bond auction yesterday it was well received i don't know who, who bought all of that but be as it may it went quite well so yields dropped back a little bit so the uh, s p 500 futures up about 20 points currencies are Fairly steady, actually, right now, so not much to report there. Uh, commodities have come off a little bit, especially uh, crude oil. Even though I think uh, we're ready to see another leg up in the commodities market. Uh, we, we had a, a big leg up from 2020 to 2022. We've seen consol cons a consolidation in the last year and a half or so. 
and I think we're gonna we're gonna be ready to resume the the secular bull market in commodities that I believe is coming. Anyway, WTI crude is uh, down a tenth at eighty two twenty. Brent is down well, actually unchanged at eighty six eighty five. High grade copper is still pretty firm. That's up uh, almost 2% at 443 or $4.43. What about cocoa? We haven't looked at cocoa recently. Well, cocoa <laughs> still doing really well. It's uh, above $10,000 uh, tons, $10,000 a ton. It get, did get up to almost 11000 so it has corrected, but it's way above... <laughs> Where, where we were at the beginning of, let's say, 2023 at two and a half thousand. So expect, uh, unfortunately, uh, your chocolate bars, your Mars bars or whatever to respond with higher prices uh, soon, unfortunately. So we'll finish right here. Uh, just let you know that the 10 year yield has dropped to 4.58, yesterday it was at 4.66, still quite high at this level, and we're gonna keep an eye on it. So with that, I'm gonna wish you all a very good day, take care, bye.